want me to hold you? <laughs> you go scared. Do you want to come sit on my lap? <laughs> Summer's soft sun reaches through the rainforest canopy and paints everything in its warmth. The forest is woven with vibrant growth. New blooms, new life, and a new light spreads across the land. We harvest and cook and celebrate the abundant growth of the summertime. This season always reminding us to see the beauty of each small thing. Last week these tiny ducklings hatched and our whole world has become consumed by their cuteness. They too are teaching us of all the little joys. They squeak and waggle their tails as we teach them to swim for the first time. Their little feathers have never felt the water surrounding them before. Seeing everything through their innocent eyes lets us understand the world differently. We named the little yellow one Happy and the bigger black one Snug. Their names fit their characters so perfectly. <laughs> she comes back to the hand each time. The chestnut tree is full of nuts. It's dropping them everywhere, all over the ground. We're collecting them early this year, while there are still unripe nuts on the tree. This is in the hopes that they won't be rotten. Chestnuts grow much better in cooler climates, and they seem to always ripen in our late summer or autumn, which is when we get a lot of rain. This means that we never get a huge harvest, because with all of the moisture, they rot and decompose. While the rainforest isn't the best place to grow chestnuts, we focus on the things that grow best in this climate, which in this season is mangoes, jambu, bananas and lychees. This is an important concept in growing food from a permaculture mindset, focusing on how things grow within your climate and working with nature rather than against it. As I sew my own clothes, I like to follow this ethos, working with secondhand fabrics and appreciating them as a beautiful resource, in the same way that we view the land or soil with reverence. Mm -hmm. 
but sometimes my problem with sewing is that I respect the fabric a little too much and I can't make a decision. I have too many gingham options and I'm just laying in a bed of all of my options that I could make this dress from. I'm having a nap to decide. There's just so many different colour schemes that you could go with. Gingham has so many opportunities, like I could do this kind of nice brown toned dress, or I could go like pastel, or then I could go like classic blue and red gingham, go the real farmer look. And then I've got the yellow section over here, and it's too much. It's too much to decide on. I don't know what to do. It, they'll all be beautiful, and I can't make the decision. Today I'm making a dress for Julia, so I'm draping it on my mannequin exactly how I want it to fit. I create these design lines across the body to show where each seam will be. And then I start to drape the fabric in the way that I want it to fall. Close your eyes and not I then draw the seams and unpin it, laying it flat and creating a pattern piece to cut it from. I do this for each piece and then I begin to cut from the fabric that I want, being careful to remember seam allowance for when I sew each piece together. Then I start sewing, and this is the fun part, watching each piece slowly come together. We try to cook in the same way that nature interacts too, always thinking about our impact within the world. We try to grow as much food as we can, eating harvests straight from the garden. Pumpkins are abundant right now, so most days we try to find new ways to cook with them. Today I'm making a pumpkin and feta ravioli from scratch, inspired by our recent travels in Italy. I'm attempting to make it all gluten-free, which is always a little bit more difficult.
the thousands of magical fruit trees were planted by our grandparents and tended by our parents. When we lost our dad suddenly, we realised that it was our turn to care for the land, continuing to plant trees for the generations to come. We wrote a book telling the story of why we chose to live this life in the rainforest. We write about the struggles, the hardships, the beauty and the joy. It feels like such an honour to share these stories with you. You can buy it through the link in our description or in bookstores around the world. The next steps for sewing is to slowly sew each piece together. I have almost finished the top. It only has the straps to go really, and I think it's fitting well. So that's exciting. And I'm kind of realizing that it's really cute as a top and I could have just made a top, but I'm really excited about the whole dress. But next time I might use this pattern to just make a cute little top. I work in a way where I only use small cuts of fabric. So even as I create this full length dress, full of flair, there is no piece that is wider than 30 centimeters. I love this way of sewing because it means that I can create from waste and truly appreciate each small cut of fabric but it does take a lot of time. This is why you don't see these methods used in the conventional manufacturing of garments, because fast and simple sewing is preferred, because then the company can make a lot of profits. I think that this is the reason that fashion has become such a consuming, wasteful industry, because the love and craft is being replaced by profits and exploitation. The biggest way that we can protest this shift in fashion is to appreciate the craft of design, to look closely at the way that something is sewn and consider it deeply, seeing the beauty, love and energy put into each piece. We live on the lands of the Rakwal and Minchipal people of the Bunjalung Nation. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the country we live on and recognize their continuing connection to the land and waters. We thank them for protecting this rainforest and its ecosystem since time immemorial. We move the sheep to a new paddock often to keep them healthy and warm free. This rotational grazing is great for the soil health and this routine is so beautiful for us too. We connect with the sheep as we move them to a new paddock, understanding their different ways of communicating. They are so cuddly at the moment in the heat of summer. We always find them napping in the shade of a tree. Well, this is a beautiful rainforest plant. It's poisonous to sheep, so they started eating it before. So I'm just going to cut it all back and just let the main tree grow up so that no more sheep eat it. This is a fig tree that we planted a few years ago now and this is the first time it's got proper fruit on it which is so exciting. They're quite hard to grow in this climate so it's a big moment. I don't know what we'll make from it. Maybe, maybe I'll make pancakes and have it with maybe pecan nuts and it's better.
this tree fell on the fence last night, so the fence wasn't working, so I'm going to move it so that it works again. I tried to deshell the chestnuts to find that there was barely any nut developed. It must be too early in the season, so the nuts are super small and not really worth it. In this life, there are always times when we spend hours harvesting to find out that the fruit is spoiled. But that's all part of it. There is beauty in the unpredictability too. For the skirt section of the dress, I have done the maths to create this pattern that is only made from squares and isosceles triangles. This means that there is absolutely no waste in the whole dress, because every piece of the pattern fits perfectly. It's getting so close now, so all I have to do is add some straps and put in the zip at the back. So, oh and then hammer. Hammer is going to be intense because if you look at the circumference of this skirt, don't even get me started. The maths for this was like impossible. But it is a really, really big skirt, so to hem it takes time. So I think that's going to be the big job. <laughs> I'm not excited. But then I'm finished. I love sewing something for someone else because you're able to see their love for the piece and see all the care that you put in just pour outwards. Julia has been wearing this dress non-stop since I finished it and it's the most perfect piece for frolicking with the ducklings. You want your friend. Thank you for watching, you can find a link to our book in the description below. The music in this video is by Fellow Hollow, and you can find their links in our description too. Thank you so much to our patrons who support our journey of regenerating the forests and creeks.